Maniac Mansion and its sequel, Day of the Tentacle, are often heralded as two of the best point and click adventure games of all time. And that won't surprise anyone considering Ron Gilbert headed up the development of Maniac Mansion with Gary Winnett. Day of the Tentacle development was handed to LucasArts prodigies Tim Schafer and Dave Grossman. Every LucasArts point and click game that came after Maniac Mansion was developed using the same engine, Scum. Script, creation, utility for Maniac Mansion. And many modern point and click games are modelled after the 90s LucasArts classics. This makes Maniac Mansion one of, if not the most influential adventure game ever. Its biggest downside? There's just not enough of it. Welcome to Consequences, the only choice that matters. If you love story driven adventure games, push that subscribe button and like the video. I make videos and everything from point and clicks to RPGs. If it's got a good story, I've got something to say. Here's my countdown of the five best games to play if you're a fan of Maniac Mansion and Day of the Tentacle, in no particular order. Who could that be at this hour? Ah, the postman. Maybe it's a reply to my ad from the Lonely Hearts column. If ever a sequel to Day of the Tentacle came, this would be it. Return of the Tentacle is a high quality fan made game that follows directly after the events of the second game. Purple Tentacle has returned and he's out for revenge. The game sees the return of popular cast of characters from Day of the Tentacle with the player taking control once again of Bernard, Hoagie and Laverne. The game matches the art style and quality of the Day of Tentacle remaster created by Double Fine. It's set at the same location in the Mansion Come Hotel and doesn't deviate much from the original DOTT setting. There are a few surprises in store including a cameo from two of LucasArts most lovable characters. It's a short game that will take around 90 to 120 minutes to finish and acts as a prologue to a larger game that would see the trio spread across space rather than time. The game was released for free in 2018 and nothing has been shared about a potential full release since. But if this is all we get, it's enough because it's perfect. Or was he? If you've never heard of The Cave before, that's okay. But it's a game created by Ron Gilbert with the backing of Tim Schafer and Double Fine. It's kind of a spiritual successor to Maniac Mansion in a lot of ways, or at least it's the natural progression of storytelling techniques that were used in the original Maniac Mansion game. Okay, follow him. Ah, got ya! This has gone on long enough. See you later. You choose three out of seven characters who are about to explore a cave to find something that their heart desires. The game contains puzzles relating to each character and each of the protagonists has a different set of special skills that help you to master each puzzle. The game is heavily replayable as you mix and match the different characters to figure out their story and how they can work together while spelunking. Much like how Maniac Mansion gave you Dave Miller and six of his friends, each who had unique dialogue and action options. The cave is Ron Gilbert at his funniest, there's no holding back on the jokes. Elements of Monkey Island also find their way into the game as well. Both games contain theme park themes and references and that feeds into the stage design and overall atmosphere of both games. just witnessed may seem like horrific and pointless destruction, but if you step back and take in the big picture, you will surely see that the lives of a hundred million people pale in comparison to being able to spelunk a little further. Now how about an entirely free, short point and click thriller game in the style of Maniac Mansion? Billy Masters was right is the game for you. In the game you play as Billy who's been grounded because no one believes him that his teacher is up to no good. When Billy realises his neighbours have been targeted by murderers, he tries to get his parents and the police to help. It's up to you to try and save the victims and finally get people to believe Billy. Complete puzzles, talk to horrible and I mean awful parents 
and enjoy a game that really does look and feel like Maniac Mansion. Bini Masters won't take up too much of your time, but some of the puzzles can be rather challenging. I found myself at a metaphorical dead end more than once, only to find out that I had the right solution on my person all along. If you think you've got what it takes to protect the neighbourhood, you can pick up this game for free via the link in the video description and have it finished before tea. Whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. So take your dime store suit and good news pamphlets and stick them where the f sun don't shine. Ron Gilbert's most recent game was created with nostalgia in mind. It's the true first pixel art game he ever made, and he teamed up with Maniac Mansion's Gary Winnick to bring Thimbleweed Park to life. It might sound confusing to hear me say that this is the first pixel art game, considering both Monkey Island 1 and 2 and even Maniac Mansion were pixel art as well, but the differences lie in the times they were created. Pixel art was cutting edge game design at the end of the 80s and at the start of the 90s. It was just how you made a game. There wasn't necessarily a stylistic choice to be pixel art. It's just what the technology was capable of at the time. By the time Thimbleweed Park came out in 2014, graphics had come a little way from 16-bit gaming. The Last of Us had been released, pushing the PlayStation 3's capabilities further than they had ever been before, but Ron and Gary created their first pixel art game using a newly built engine. The game is designed to feel like it belongs among the 90s greats, and it achieves that with stunning ease. The game is a flawless point-and-click classic that brings out the best of Ron Gilbert's humour and legendary game design. You play as five different characters on the backdrop of a small town murder and a growing mystery. Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island are clear inspirations for this game, but it is much more than a throwback game. It is a modern game that stands independently for its characters and its story. If Maniac Mansion is your thing, Ron Gilbert's latest game will scratch that itch. You know, I was at your fateful last performance. Well, good for you. So did I insult you? No, I was hiding behind the person in front of me. Your tough luck, I loved insulting kids. It was so easy to make them cry. The last game I want to talk about is actually a series of game with over a hundred episodes. Maniac Mansion Mania is a collection of games set within the same universe set after the events of Day of the Tentacle. It's an entirely fan-made series created using Adventure Game Studio. Most of the creators are German, and it's a bit feast or famine based on whether they've trans been translated to your language or not. However, if you speak German, you'll have enough games to play and last an entire year. If you speak English, there are around 10 to play. The beauty of Maniac Mansion Mania is that the assets are available for free, and many people cut their teeth learning how to make point and click adventure games using them. They're short vignettes that take roughly half an hour to finish. Most episodes centre around Bernard, but many episodes feature other characters from the classic lineup, and even Laverne and Hoagie from Day of the Tentacle have been demade to fit the Maniac Mansion style. Just head over to the Mania website, download the games, and have your fill. The link, as they will be for all these games, are in the description below, so be sure to go and check them out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe so we can get the channel to 1,000 subscribers. It would mean the world to me. 